hello everyone. My name is Francisco Cardoso. I am the current president of MDS, the International Parkinson's and Movement Disorders uh, Society. This is a very special occasion for all of us, and I will introduce uh, all my colleagues who are part of this uh, webinar as well. But before I start that, I would like to make a few announcements in terms of housekeeping. As we have a very large number of people, and congratulations and thanks for all of you who have, who have joined us, it's important that we remain mute throughout the webinar, but with the cameras on, because at some point when the number of people joining uh, the meeting is stable, then we'll try to have a picture of all of us. So we want to see all of you. And my final comment before I start the introduction is actually uh, asking you, and many people are using uh, already the, the chat box. So please uh, uh, provide the name of your country and the name of the city where you are based. Because uh, you may not be aware that this is the very first truly global celebration of the World Parkinson's Day promoted by MDS. Because of time zones, we had a previous session a few hours ago addressing uh, our uh, friends and colleagues from Asia and Oceania. And now we are dealing with the Western Hemisphere. And that's why actually we have people representing the sections of MDS that are based in the Western Hemisphere. For some of you who are not particularly familiar with our uh, structure, we have a, a global uh, uh, central office, and I am head of that as a president. So I am a Brazilian neurologist, but we have an African section. And uh, the African section is chaired by my friend and colleague, Professor Nideka Okubadeju from uh, Lagos, uh, Nigeria. So going up so to Europe, I have the pleasure to have also my friend and colleague, Professor Pili Taba from uh, Estonia, and she's waving at us. She's the chair of uh, the European section. And now crossing the ocean and coming to my continent as well, I have Professor Susan Fox based in uh, Toronto, Canada, who is the current chair of uh, the Pan-American section. I have also to mention my colleague, uh, uh, John Dean, who is a speech therapist, and he is the current chair of the Allied Health Professional Group. MDS is not a, a medical society in the sense of not reaching out to other healthcare professionals. So John is very kindly representing all the allied health professionals. So not only speech therapists, but physical therapists and nurses and everyone else who works uh, uh, with uh, uh, movement disorders patients and this particular case, uh, PD. And, and I have to highlight also the presence of Professor Joaquin Ferreira from Lisbon. Uh, uh, Professor Ferreira, he's the chair of the Communication Oversight Committee. And along with uh, our young colleague, Dr. Rui Araújo from Portugal as well, they are, as a matter of fact, responsible for having created, I must say on a very short notice, the structure behind all these meetings. So many thanks, Joaquin, many thanks, Rui, for this wonderful job that you have been done. And, and Last but not least, we have to highlight the crucial role played by MDS staff. So they have been working behind the scenes, and some of them, they are actually uh, in front of the scene right now, if I may say so. They have provided all the technical aspects behind that. So a few words before we move on to the first part of this uh, meeting. You may know that 
the World Parkinson's Day uh, is a celebration of Parkinson's disease. But the, the reason uh, this particular date was chosen because today is Dr. Parkinson's birthday. And, and by uh, an unexpected coincidence, I'm actually in London, UK, right now, where he was born. In, in fact, I'm speaking from a place which is not very far from uh, uh, he was born. And I would like really to mention a couple of issues regarding Dr. Parkinson. One of them is the most obvious one. So back in 1817, he wrote his masterpiece, an essay on shaking pulse. So he called PD shaking pulse at that time. And he was able really to capture the most important clinical features uh, of uh, Parkinson's disease. The name Parkinson's disease was, in fact, given uh, decades later by the great French neurologist Jean Martin Charcot. But something that is not very uh, well known by many people is that uh, Dr. Parkinson, he had a great commitment to people with diseases. So he was not really one of the doctors of that age that would remain in his office called here in the UK surgery. But there is very good documentation that he would go out, reaching out to people. And in essence, what we are doing in celebrating this day is to try to, uh, to repeat his gesture of reaching out to people with people. This, that's the central point that we want really to, to celebrate. It's, it's a celebration of healthcare professionals who are uh, trying to reach out to people uh, uh, with movement disorders and Parkinson's disease in particular. But if I may use an image, people with PD, they are, they star in the center of the galaxy. And we are actually orbiting around patients. So the whole idea, and that's actually the mission of MDS. Our mission, the main mission is to provide uh, uh, education for healthcare professionals in order to improve the lives of people with movement disorders and particularly uh, Parkinson's disease. So I am really very happy to welcome all of you and I hope that we'll have chance really to have uh, a, a very uh, interactive and, and enjoyable uh, uh, celebration. Hello. My name is Suketu Kandar, and I'm a practicing movement disorder neurologist working in Northern California. I always tell my patients that the key to a successful treatment plan consists of three things. Number one, making sure that you have the right diagnosis and optimizing your medications, but that's just one part. Number two, making sure you have the right team surrounding you to help you in the best way possible. That would include your neurologist, your therapist, and maybe any other discipline that might actually be needed at the time. And then number three, and maybe even most important, is that you as the patient, as well as your loved ones, be empowered, partnered, and educated so you can be as informed about Parkinson's as possible. So again, to reiterate, making sure you have the right medications, the right team, and the right information. Happy World Parkinson's Day. My main advice is to take your time and so impose your read to the world. This advice is worth from the very beginning of the disease when you need time to internalize and metabolize a diagnosis that you have just received. So take your time, all the time that you need, and start a new life at your own read, a read for your activities and your feelings. Just not let the others decide your time and timeline because you are the chief. I am Dr. Romario Ramos from the Philippines. Since most of the people I treat for Parkinson's disease have difficulty sleeping at night, I advise them to schedule their physical therapies in the morning 
so as not to interfere with their sleep. Also, I advise their caregivers, who usually are family members, to take turns in caring for their loved ones to avoid burnout. Aside from their motor symptoms, we physicians should also look after their mental health and spot any signs of depression or anxiety at the onset so we can treat them immediately. I believe that together, as one, we can improve the quality of life of people with Parkinson's disease. It can be difficult to establish daily exercises that benefit your well-being into your daily routine. Life can be busy and sometimes it's difficult to find the time. One tip for people with Parkinson's might be to try and connect these exercises with something that you're already doing regularly. For example, you might want to do your vocal exercises in the morning whilst you're having a shower, after you've brushed your teeth, or perhaps whilst you're waiting for the kettle to boil. Hi, my name is Barbara. Hi, my name is Joana. We are speech pathologists from Campus Neurologico in Portugal. We are here to talk about cough during swallowing liquids because it's a common and uncomfortable sign of swallowing difficulties in PD. We are here to share some tips to avoid it. If your head is backward, you will have more chances to cough. If you cannot choose the cup or the bottle, take one sip of each time and rectify your posture during swallowing. If you can choose, prefer a low cup, a bottle with a cup, or a nosy cut-out cup. Hi, I'm John Dean. I'm a speech-language pathologist from the U.S. Now, many people with Parkinson's disease report having difficulties with their medications, what we would refer to medically as pill dysphagia. A lot of reasons why that could happen in Parkinson's, but I'm not here to talk about that today. Instead, I want to ask you to maybe put the water aside for a moment and take your pills with a puree. So I have a little bit of applesauce right here. You just lay the pill right onto there and you put it onto the tongue. You're not going to chew it. You're not going to move it around. You're just going to take it and swallow. Goes right down, no issues, no catching. And I contrast that if you're drinking water when you're trying to take a pill, you're now trying to control this liquid, which is going to go wherever it wants to go, while you're also trying to control this pill, which is small and hard and has edges. It just doesn't work very well. You're trying to control what we call a mixed consistency. So bypass that with a puree. Now, if you are dealing with problems with your medications, that's a great reason to seek out a speech-language pathologist that knows a thing or two about Parkinson's. Use and asymmetrical breathing can be one of the problems in Parkinson's disease. It can be caused by stiffness of the ribcage, round shoulder, stooped posture, or decreasing in movement sense. We are going to introduce a simple exercise to correct these problems. Secure an elastic band over the lower ribcage, which is about three fingers breadth up from the last rib. Keep your knees fixed over the side of the chair. Keep your back straight. Now try to take a normal breath in. Feel how much chest is expanding and whether it is symmetrical on both sides. Now breathe in while stretching out the elastic band in all directions and breathe out. In a count of five, one, two, three, four, five. Breathe in, one, two, three. Breathe out, one, two, three, four, five. Repeat five times per set for three sets twice a day. Every breath counts. You will improve. Hello, my name is Alexandra and I am a physiotherapist from Portugal at Campo Neurologico. Using the lift can be a difficulty for people with freezing of gait. Use the next tips to facilitate your daily life. Count your steps while waiting for the doors to open, marching in place with high knees to prepare yourself to begin walking. When the doors are open, proceed to the lift and turn in the same rhythm. Stop with your feet apart and begin walking on the spot to exit the lift. Then count the steps to walk forward. Greetings everyone, happy World Parkinson's Day. My name is Julia Wood and I'm the Director of Professional and Community Education for the Lewy Body Dementia Association. I live in Philadelphia in the United States and I've got a tip um, to help you get items out of your wallet if you're having trouble with that. So you grab these little sticky tabs and you're gonna take one 
and we're going to put it on cards that you have to get in and out of your wallet. So then what you can do is slide this in. And when you need to get them out, maybe you're in a hurry, feeling pressured, people are behind you, you can grab that with a big pinch, pull the card out. The nice thing too is they are removable. So you can take them off if you need to swipe the card and get it back in your wallet. So hope that helps you the next time that you're out and about. And remember, the best therapy is using these little tips and hacks to continue to do all the things that are meaningful in your life so you can live your life to its fullest. Be well. Gait impairments are common and disabling in people with Parkinson's disease. But luckily, there are creative ways to improve walking, these so-called compensation strategies. We have developed a website, walkingwithparkinson.com, where you will find an overview of the known compensation strategies, including background information. In addition, you will have the opportunity to send in videos yourself of new compensation strategies. In this way, the website forms an interactive platform where people with Parkinson's disease and healthcare professionals can learn from each other. By doing so, we hope to make it easier to find helpful ways to improve walking. Hello everyone, I'm Filipa and I'm a physiotherapist at CNS Campus Neurologic in Portugal. In honor of World Parkinson's Day, I'd like to provide some tips on how to avoid potential risks associated with swimming. To begin with, avoid diving. Using the steps to access and exit the pool is safer. Make sure the maximum depth of the water does not exceed your shoulders. Last but not least, always bring someone with you. Activities are more enjoyable when done with a friend and if something goes wrong, we have someone by our side to help. Surround yourself with things that make you happy. Make phone calls. I love making phone calls. I love to dance. I love music. I love getting outside, being outdoors, and look at those beautiful clouds, just so beautiful. Woo, and that hot tub, get yourself a hot tub if you can. Eat good foods, be thankful for your friends, and all the love and support that's out there for you. And, you know, even with Parkinson's disease, there is still so much in life that we have to celebrate. Olá, meu nome é Carminho, sou o Ian Parque. Quando recebi o diagnóstico, senti o chão fugir me debaixo dos pés. No fundo, só consegues pensar no impacto que isso vai ter. Tentas imaginar como a tua família vai reagir. O que vai acontecer à tua carreira, à tua rotina? Porque na tua cabeça, a realidade como te conhecias até agora já não existe. O processo de assimilação é bastante difícil. Já para não falar em toda a angústia que sentes. É literalmente um mundo no e nunca estás preparado. Mas depois, com o tempo para digerir tudo e refletir, percebes que o Parkinson não é uma fatalidade. O que é preciso é relativizar. Ouvir o teu corpo, definir prioridades, deixar de fazer freitos e encarar cada obstáculo com a garra de quem sabe que o vai vencer. A verdade é que todos os seres humanos têm limitações. A chave está na adaptação. Ter Parkinson só significa que tens que tratar melhor, comer melhor, pôr parte do stress, dedicar-te às tuas paixões. Podes fazer tudo na mesma. A vida com Parkinson é vida. Pensares o contrário, mas seja injusto com aquilo que topes. Os teus sonhos e desejos continuam válidos. Não há limites para o futuro. O importante é que te mexas e não capazes. I hope you have enjoyed the video. I, I did very much. It was a really a global uh, a perspective. So we had uh, inputs from Asia, from Europe, from uh, the American continent as well. So let's make a few comments about that. Perhaps speaking of Africa, uh, Nideka, would you give, because the, the world, uh, needless to say, is quite diverse, heterogeneous. W would you highlight one specific point uh, that is particularly relevant in Africa, please? Thank you, Chico. I think the advice given was re and the tips were really um, very important and practical. From the African perspective, something that rings really true is support. And in Africa, we're conversant with the fact that we have a lot of social support 
family support. Um, I think that people with Parkinson's disease really need to take advantage of the tips that relate to just ensuring that you connect with your family and take the help that they can offer you along the journey. Um, the other thing is with respect to incorporating the tips that have been shared into your day-to-day -day lifestyle and just ensuring that whatever works for you, um, you incorporate it and continue to work with that and understand like one of them said that life with Parkinson's is life. Thank you, Nideka. Thank you. Uh, John, uh... Tell me, uh, I enjoyed very much the, uh, the tip that you gave on the video, but expand into some other areas of allied health professionals. Uh, would you make a comment that you believe could be helpful to all of us? Well, I, I think that uh, so many of the allied health professionals that we're in have, have a membership in the Movement Disorder Society, the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society, uh, we're boots on the ground and we get to see people and we get to see their tips and we get to see their ideas. So I, I actually liberated that idea from somebody who came and showed it to me. And I think that that's how we can learn from the people that we're working with and then interact with the physicians and the, and the, the other clinicians. It's a really, it's a great symbiosis. And it's really great that we have an international body like the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society to provide direction and guidance for that, for educational purposes. Let me ask you something, because one of the main issues, global issues, is access to, to care. Of course, that this applies to movement disorders, doctors. There is, unfortunately, a shortage of people well trained in that area. That's why MDS has put so much emphasis on training uh, healthcare providers in general. But would you give you, John, again, any particular advice to people who live in areas where they do not have an in person uh, uh, access to healthcare professionals? Uh, uh, perhaps that one of the potential positive uh, uh, lessons that we have learned during this COVID era was uh, the role for telemedicine for online care. Any comments on that? Well, I, I think you've hit the nail right on the head there, uh, uh, Professor Cardozo, because it's it's a situation where uh, necessity became the mother of invention. And I think we all got very proficient on online uh, interventions and it's moved the ball forward for telemedicine. I do think that for people who are in these kind of underserved and outlying areas, it's important to find people that have training and, and knowledge and experience. And I think experience is really the hard part. And I think that's, again, where the, the international body can be uh, a resource as well as other NGOs and nonprofits there. I was so pleased to see so many of the nonprofits that are represented here today and at the program last night. And so finding those resources and most importantly, and I'll say this to anybody living with Parkinson's, anybody coming uh, to that diagnosis, exercise is one of the most important things you can do to take action, to do what you can to take control. Work with your clinicians that know what they're doing, take the medications and the advice that they provide with that. But uh, doing the exercise by working with an allied health professional or an exercise professional that knows a little bit about Parkinson's is really one of the most important things all of us can do. So seek them out. Okay, thank you, John. Very nice comment. And Susan, speaking from the American continent, what would you like to highlight to us? Because th this is an extremely diverse uh, uh, continent in terms of uh, uh, differences. So any particular comment? Yes, thank you. Um, and, and great to see so many people here. This is wonderful. Um, I think I'd like to make yes a, a couple of comments. Um, first of all, I think the most important thing all of us say wherever we're training or, or practicing medicine is that um, exercise remains the number one um, important thing that you can do yourself to help your, your Parkinson's. So the thing I always tell people is exercise, exercise, exercise. Um, in terms of access to exercise, I think that's an important point that Professor Cardoso was um, alluding to there, that not all, all of us have access to physiotherapists, not all of us have a nice, wonderful, multidisciplinary team that we can call on. And I always tell patients, people with Parkinson's, that just do what you can do. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be going for a walk every day. 
it can be going out into your backyard, your garden and just walking around. It, it can be something very simple that doesn't cost any money. So I always say do what you can do that you enjoy doing and doesn't cost money. So I think that's that's another key point. I think the other second point I'd really like to make um, on this World Parkinson Day, um, James Parkinson um, being a, mayor, a man, um, that women with Parkinson's often have very different needs. And I think we're very much more aware now that the needs of um, men, women with Parkinson's may be very different. Um, the gender maybe make things different in the ways medication um, that the, the effects of childbirth, menopause, hormones, all of this, I think, plays into how Parkinson's affects women versus men. And I think this individualized approach to managing people with Parkinson's, I think, is incredibly important wherever you are in the world. And I think um, as an organization, we're very aware of this. Um, and I hope that we're, we're becoming more aware of it when we're, we're treating you all, that we really treat you as an individual. But I'd really like to make that, that point. And again, nice to see everybody here. Well done, Susan. And I would like to highlight in this uh, line of gender that half roughly of uh, uh, MDS membership right now is made of females. So the role that females are playing on the other side as well, Susan, in providing care to people with PD is already meaningful and, and growing. I'm sure that it will. And uh, really, uh, now, one of the points that I, uh, I I cannot overlook while trying to, to, to really talk to you is the geographic proximity that you have with Ukraine. And, and, and I, I have noticed that there are some attendees uh, on this webinar from Ukraine. So many thanks, because, of course, given the horrendous situation that all of you are uh, undergoing terrible situation. So it, it, it's really... It, it, it moves me to realize that there is someone from Ukraine. So, Billy, your comments, please. Thank you very much. I also noticed that there are several friends from Ukraine also together with us. And I think that is one key is to be together, to support each other. And uh, I'm anyway happy to see that uh, we feel and we think in the same way uh, despite the country or region uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, for me, the most important key in the light of all of this was that uh, do things together, uh, support each other and uh, uh, be together with your friends. And uh, with all of this, uh, still for Parkinson's disease, moving is very important uh, in any conditions, in any situation, uh, and uh, I think uh, that it is really important to be like a team, team in management of Parkinson's and team in our daily life. Thank you very much. Hello and happy World Parkinson's Day. My name is Julie Lankiewicz and I am a speech language pathologist at Shirley Ryan Ability Lab in Chicago. I'm here to run through some simple voice exercises with you today to help you maintain and improve your voice. These exercises can be done either seated like I am or standing. If you are seated, please make sure that you maintain a good posture throughout. Also make sure to have something to hydrate with throughout. Our first exercise is gonna work on three things. It's gonna work on your volume, your breath support, and your respiratory drive. We're just gonna say, ah, uh, but we are gonna hold it for 10 seconds. Here we go, taking a good deep breath in, let's say ah, uh, all together. Ah. Uh, perfect. We're actually gonna do that five times, taking a break in between, of course. Our second exercise, we're still gonna use our ahs, but now we're working on our pitch and our intonation to help during conversation and just overall social interaction. We're gonna do a glide with our ahs. So we're just gonna kinda of go on up and come down together. Let's do an ah glide working on our pitch and intonation. Here we go. Ah. Uh, uh, 
That one we want to do five times as well. Again, taking a break in between. Our third and final exercise is working on our over articulation, our volume, and our pacing. We're just going to count by fives all together up to 100. We are going to take a break in between as we go along to allow more breath into our lungs. Here we go counting by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Stop and take a break. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Stop and take a break. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75. Stop and take a break. 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. This one we want to do three times. Again, taking rest breaks in between. Those are your three simple voice exercises that you can do to maintain and improve your voice. Happy World Parkinson's Day once again from the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab in Chicago. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, my name is Josefa Domingos. I am here today to make you sweat. So I want you to get up from your chair, your couch, wherever you're sitting, and let us do some exercise. Now we're gonna do something uh, quite simple. Three movements that we're focusing on. We are going to be punching. We are going to be squatting, bending those knees nicely. And we also are going to be doing some kicking in different directions. So let us do this. You can't get this wrong, okay? Join me. Let's start with some punching. I want you to stretch out those elbows. I'm keeping my hands loose, so nothing of fists with rigidity, just loose. Let's try to move around in our space. Stretching it out. Now I can punch forward. I can punch up. I can punch down. I can punch to the side. You choose. It doesn't matter. As long as you keep moving. Our goal here is to raise those heart rates all the way up. Other side. Good. Let's come down to a nice squat. Ooh, going low. See how low you can go. Bending those knees, coming up. Let's go into kicking. I'm kicking forward. I can kick sideways. <laughs> forward, forward, side, side. Make sure to keep yourself safe. If it's low, it's low, it's okay. If it's high, high, push yourself. Kick, kick, move around. Use your space. Our punches. Let's double them up. Two. Side. Turn that foot. Beautiful guys. Just one. Turn that foot. It's important. Let's get some kicking. Breathe. Put a breath into each movement and don't forget to smile. Beautiful work. I hope you have sweated a little bit and back to the program. Hope you have fun today. That was wonderful, I, and I was so happy to see that there were many, many people, really. I could not name all of them. It was not possible, but many of you really stood up and followed all the...
the routine that was done. I enjoyed it very much. As I have also on behalf of MDS, of course, and the Communication Oversight Committee, I have to, to, to express our uh, thanks to uh, the Shirley Ryan Agility Lab and especially to my uh, it's not uh, Jennifer is not only a colleague but a very close friend of mine from Chicago so hi Jennifer I saw that you are you are uh, on the program as well and, and of course to uh, uh, Bas uh, uh, teams uh, with Josefa Domingos who she, she's a wonderful show woman really she was capable to keep up the attention of everyone so many thanks to you Josefa from uh, the Netherlands and Joaquin I believe that we are coming close to the end of the program so uh, I hope I behaved well so that I had not done anything wrong. So now it's your turn for a few words because you, you deserve really to, to have some spotlight, please. No, not at all, Francisco. First, first again, thank you. Thank you for accepting, you know, the challenging of putting this World Day in this format, you know, again, like it, it's happening. So it, I think it's, um, it, it's going very well. Again, second point is just to thank everybody, those who are attending and those who were able to you know, to put this, this program together in such a short term. And, and it's very, again, it, even if with all the limitations that we had, it's nice to see that in some way we are promoting care, again, as a community, you know, uh, it's very interesting just to see, you know, those who are writing where they come from in the chat and see that really, really, we are having a worldwide attendees. Uh, what really, it's, again, it's a sign of community that we are we want to promote at MDS and and that you are trying also to promote. So I'm I'm, I'm happy regarding that. On the other hand, just you know, going through the tips and the exercise, just to say that we, we saw tips from you know diagnosis to treatment. Um, what it's really you know the spectrum of type of situation that we need to face you know in the management of Parkinson. And also, it's very interesting to see that we have received many tips from physicians, from neurologists, from allied health professionals, and from patients, and from patients associations. So as a community, I think clearly we, are, we should be very happy on the, on the movement that we are starting. Just a special word to Rui Rouge, again, our colleague that was the, really the mentor of this idea of bringing exercise. And exercise and movement tips are also a sign of the type of merge that we want to see between science and really practical aspects and practical clinic. And so this is a true translation, you know, from science to care. So I think that the program that we are able to implement and everybody enjoyed really reflect that. And I'm sure that it also reflects what MDS tried to implement for Parkinson's disease. So Francisco, thank you for hosting, you know, this program inside MDS and for chairing this event. Thank you.